that the body of Christ is going to be brought together in this season. The spirit of unity that is permeating the atmosphere is going to bring us back together as one. Yes, there will be divisions. The Bible lets us know that there will be divisions. But I believe that the power of the Lord in the area of strength in unity is going to prevail over those divisions. And in that it's going to prevail, we've got to be ready to go into action. This pandemic has been a season of preparation. It's been a season of isolation. It's been a season of consecration. And all of those shuns put together is going to produce a manifestation. What is it going to manifest? It's going to manifest the sons of God in the earth. The earth has been groaning. Hmm? It's been moaning. It's looking for the manifestations of the sons of God. And in that, the earth is groaning and moaning. And these are the end times. Those of us that are sons of God must move to a place where we're not rattled by anything that we see, anything that we hear, we watch on television, we hear in the news. We ought not to be concerned about the things. We must be postured and positioned so that God can get the glory out of our lives. That is the prelude to what I'm going to be speaking about today. Oftentimes, Elder, we look at mountains and we do not recognize why the mountain is there. We will see the mountain and the mountain becomes a looming and daunting obstacle in front of us. But in the season that we're in, we must move to taking the mountain. We must move to occupying until he comes. We cannot afford to let the mountain be what it is that stops us from achieving the things that God intends for us to achieve. As you've heard the scripture, those of you here read from the book of Ezekiel, and for the next couple of sessions, I will be speaking from this particular chapter. And the man of God, that is Ezekiel, is hearing from God and God is speaking to him. The same thing is true here and now that God is speaking to his people. What is he saying? Well, what he may be saying to you may be different than what he's saying to me. But the truth is, when it comes to manifestation, we are going to be the sons of God. So regardless of what God is saying to you, the end product is sonship. The end product is us moving and being aligned to the word of God. Without that alignment, there cannot be any manifestation. So we must now begin to learn how to speak to mountains. There is an empowerment of the Holy Spirit that will cause us to speak to mountains with the expectation that mountains shall be removed. Ezekiel chapter 36 says, And you, son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel. And as I read through this particular chapter, I found myself highlighting a few words. And there is a commonality in the words that I began to highlight. And they all dealt with speaking or saying. And in the prophetic dimension, we're talking about utterances. So when you hear the word prophesy, it's dealing with speaking also. So 
as I began to walk through this, and I want you to walk through this passage with me today, I began to look at how structurally the instructions are coming from God. So let's look at this very carefully. It says in that first verse again, And you, son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel, and say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, because the enemy has said of you, aha, let me pause right there for just a second. I have never seen aha placed in scripture before. I had not paid any attention. Is that your enemy is now looking to rejoice over your current state. They're excited because of the fact that you may have limitations going on. Your physical body might not be able to do the things that it used to do. But let me be the one to encourage and remind you that God always gets the last laugh. Says, aha, the ancient heights have become our possession. Therefore, prophesy... Here it is. And say, thus saith the Lord God, because they made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side so that you became the possessions of the rest of the nations and you are taken up by the lips of talkers and slandered by the people. We see some of that going on in our world today. Hmm? Don't look at the circumstances Look to your God. Therefore, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Saying equals words equals hearing equals words. Thus says the Lord God to the mountains. He's speaking to the mountains. He's speaking to the hills. He's speaking to the rivers. He is speaking to the valleys. He is speaking to the desolate waste and the cities that have been forsaken. So there is nothing that is being overlooked. God is going to deal with every area of your life. And in that he is able to deal with every area of your life, you must be positioned and postured to receive the spiritual download from on high because God is getting ready to set you up. He is literally setting us up for a blessing. He said, which became plunder and mockery to the rest of the nations all around. So when you look at the plundering and the mockery and all of the desolation that's going on in the land, don't worry. Don't be afraid. God is going to be the one to do the rebuilding. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely I have spoken. In my burning jealousy against the rest of the nations and against all Edom who gave my land to themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and spiteful minds in order to plunder its open country. What it is that have been stolen, God says, I'm going to restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. Therefore, prophesy again, speak concerning the land of Israel. And uh, say to the mountains, the hills, the rivers, and the valleys, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and my fury because you have borne shame of the nations. Thus says the Lord God, I have raised my hand in an oath. That surely the near the nations that are around you shall bear their own shame. One of the things about God when He swears an oath, you know, when we go to the courthouse or we go uh, to various swearing ends, you know, we place our hand, hands on the Bible and we raise our hand and, and and say, you know, so help me God. The awesomeness of God when He looked around and He tried to find someone that He would swear to, He could find no one else, so He swore unto Himself. And because of the awesomeness of who God is, when He swears to Himself and He swears about Himself, it can and will always come to pass. 
where man will falter, God cannot fail. I want to skip forward just a little bit, and I encourage you to read that entire 36th chapter of the book of Ezekiel because we're going to be staying there for a little while. Throughout the word, mountains are mentioned in very significant ways. Abraham nearly sacrificed Isaac on the mountains of Moriah. Almost only counts in horseshoes. Moses received the law of God on a mountain. The prophet Isaiah was in a cave on a mountain when he heard the voice of God. Caleb was given a mountain as his inheritance. The transfiguration also took place on a mountain. Jesus would oftentimes retreat to the mountain for rest and recuperation. So there is significance to the mountain. The mountain is an elevated position. Generals in war, they will climb to that elevated position so that they could oversee and strategically position and reposition their troops. Here in Ezekiel chapter 36, we see a very powerful word concerning the mountain. The prophet was told to prophesy to the mountain. But this was not just any mountain. This was specifically called the mountains of Israel. These were the mountains of Caleb and his descendants. You all know the story of Joshua and Caleb. These were the mountains of promise and prosperity. These were the fertile lands of Israel's orchids, orchards and their fields. This was a significant piece of real estate. This was the center of their agricultural district and their economic backbone. So the, the mountain has a great deal of significance here. Now, we can deal with literal mountains or we can deal with figurative mountains. It doesn't matter what the, that mountain is. When God says it's time to conquer, it's time to conquer. Some, some things have happened on these and these mountains. You see, the people, they had backslidden. They had developed a culture of defilement and debauchery. They had gone so far as to ruin the reputation of God, and he was forced to have them exiled to other lands to be conquered by other kings and their armies. Isn't that how we see things happening in the world today? Armies are coming in and looking to dominate what God has put in place. Let me be the one to let you know that what God has blessed can't no man curse. This was a very difficult and challenging time for the children of Israel. But how many of you know that the judgment of God does not last forever? We've been talking about the book of Hosea and how Hosea had been given the charge to go and connect himself with a woman that was of the, uh, let's call her a woman of the evening. But somehow, this is not just an ordinary marriage. This is a metaphoric expression for how God loves and shows his love for his children. You and I. So when we find ourselves in backslidden state, backslidden states, that those words always get to me. Say it three times real fast, and you'll know you get in trouble. But nonetheless, when you find yourself in a state that is not directly connected to God, somehow God says, I love you so much that I will send my armies to retrieve you. I will send my edges of protection, my angels from on high to bring you back into me, O Israel. You can backslide all you want to, but I love you and my love is unconditional. What kind of man would love a woman like this? And what kind of God could serve a children that would turn their backs on him continually and yet and still come and call them, say, come on back home. That's the God that you and I are serving here today, my friends. This is what we're talking about, the mountain of this distance that is created between you and God from time to time. God says, I will speak to that mountain and it shall be no more. The depth and the distance between us will be eradicated because of my love. God says, I want all of you and I want you back. How many of you know the judgment of God doesn't last forever? No, I'm not talking about the final judgment. I'm not talking about that eternal judgment. That's a whole different thing. I'm talking about the kind of judge that we have talked about where it's not punitive, but it's restorative. 
I'm talking about the judgment of God that is designed to turn people back to the Lord. I preach from this position oftentimes because there are so many people that have been hurt and experienced the pains of life and they do not want to have anything to do with God. But I'm here today to remind you that God is the God is the same God that called you out of the sin and the muck and the mire the first time. And he is waiting for you to come and be reconnected to him in totality. It's not okay to sit on the sidelines when God is pouring out his love. He is calling for you to get on back in. Told you the story many times before. I'll recount it once again. We had a young man that played on the basketball team and, you know, he would get winded sometime. You take him out of the game. And he would sit down for a few minutes. And as soon as he got his breath back, he'd come up to to the coaches and he says, you know, coach, you know, I'm, I'm... I'm ready to go in. I'm all right. I'm okay. We tell him, sit on back down. He says, I know, I know. I'm just letting you know that I'm ready to get back in the game. How many of us are ready to get back in the game? How many of us have fallen off the wagon, have fallen off the path, are ready to get back in the game? If you're not ready, now is the time to be ready. Tomorrow is promised to no man. God is calling for the kind of love that he has demonstrated to be reciprocated from your end to his. He wants all of our our hearts. So God tells the prophet to begin prophesying in that book of Ezekiel. He told them to prophesy to the mountains and to the cities that lay in a rubble. To the agricultural status, to the valley of dry bones. You see that being manifested in this chapter early on. When God says it's time to prophesy, then we had better begin prophesying. Speaking what the Lord says. In the book of Job, as I looked and I saw and remember the various challenges that Job had to go through in his life. I turned to the 22nd chapter and found it says that thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. You've got to be ready to speak yourself back into this equation, into the game of life, into the game of your relationship with God. And it's not a game to be played with. Please do not take my words from the position that I do not intend them. But I intend for you to see the seriousness of what God is saying to us today, that he wants us to remain perpetually connected to him. Do not allow the valley and the gulfs that come up in our lives to separate us from his love. If we go back to that 21st verse of the 22nd chapter, it says, Submit to God and you will have peace. Then things will go well for you. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, listen to his instructions and store them in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So clean up your life. If you give up your lust for money and throw your precious gold into the river, the Almighty himself will be your treasure. He will be your precious silver. So oftentimes we find ourselves chasing after things, chasing after. No, God said, stand still and see my salvation. We create this gulf between us and God because we chase after things. Verse 26 says, then you will take the light in the almighty and look up to God. You will pray to him and he will hear you and you will fulfill your vows to him. How many of us have made vows that we are not keeping? God says that becomes the gulf between the mountain. And I want you to begin to speak to that mountain and the mountain will fill up that gulf and you will have a straight pathway back to me in a right relationship. He says you will succeed in whatever you choose to do and light will shine on the road ahead of you. If people are in trouble and you say help them, God will save them. Why? Because you have the power of God operating in your life. These are not just mere words. These are words that carry life and power because you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Even sinners will be rescued. They will be rescued because your hands are pure. Oh, to have a pure hand and a pure heart and a clean heart toward God. 
There are some people hearing me who need to begin prophesying, who need to begin to declare the word of the Lord over their various situations. I don't know whom I'm speaking with, and I always say I don't know whom I'm speaking with, but it's not more of whom I'm speaking to. Whatever it is that I say that applies, then God has designated this word for you. You need to say what God says about the mountain that is facing you today. You may be faced with a court situation. God said, speak to that mountain. Declare the victory in that situation. There are some who need to be reminded and remember what God has done for them through the prophetic utterances that have come forth in times past. You're looking at a person that believe in the word of God that comes from the mouth of, the, of a true prophet. Why? Because I've seen the manifestation of that word. You see, when you begin to decree or proclaim or pronounce a thing, something begins to happen. When we begin to decree the message of the Lord, it begins to be established. That's what faith does. We walk by faith and not by sight. So what I speak is what I expect to receive by way of the word of God. These are not just willy-nilly confessions and positive reinforcements. No, these are prophetic utterances by way of the truth of God, by way of his word. It sets some things into motion. It births some new things in our lives. It brings things to pass. Why? Because God is the one that's prophesying. All he's looking for are instruments to articulate his voice and his words in the season that we're in. The reason some people have not received from the Lord is that they have not decreed or voiced the word of the Lord. You know, there are times when I go through my daily um, walk and I said, have I confessed the word of the Lord today? Things begin to go awry and, and all kinds of chaos is going on. And it just comes to me and said, what word have I confessed? Am I confessing the word of the Lord or am I confessing the, the confusion that's in, in my midst? The more I confess the confusion, the more confusion I get. You get what you speak. I am decreeing and declare that these mountains are coming down. We will use them as stepping stones to our next dimension. God is going to allow every child of God that's under the sound of my voice to be able to decree and see manifested, manifested word. Now, this is not a name it and claim it goose, pink, goose pimple message. No, this is a serious truth that is proclaiming the consistency of the word of God. If you will begin proclaiming it, God will establish it and it will shine a light to the pathway on which you should travel. I don't know about you again. You know what? God has shown me some things and he says, come and walk this way. Have you ever seen God talk to you in that way? He says, come and walk this way. And you begin to walk down that pathway. And all of a sudden, you don't know where you're going to end up. But you just know that you're on the right path. I share the story often and I share it again for your benefit. When the Lord came and says, we want you to go in this direction. The man of God says, come thou with us and we will do you good. I think that was the Lord speaking. And because it was the Lord speaking, our past and our lives have been changed forever. That's the kind of prophetic utterances that's going on in our midst today. The kind of uh, words that will change your life forever. When you are aligned to this man of God and to this work of the Lord and you're truly sold out, God says your path shall be made straight. Your pockets will not have holes in them. You will see a graduated increase in the manifold blessings of God. That's what God is doing in this season, my friends. Let's go back to the, mo to the mountain for just a few minutes. My mountain is there for a reason. God begins giving the children of Israel a message. He says, while I was dealing with you and attempting to get you turned around, the neighboring nations, or should I say the enemy, came in and through, they came in through the back door. The enemy has a way of trying to come in through the back door. You know, you know, you, things are going along real smoothly. All of a sudden, you, the enemy shows up. You say, where did you come from? I've been to and fro seeking whom I can destroy. 
So the enemy comes in through the back door. <laughs> Not only that, but he was defiling the very land that God had given the children of Israel. Read the chapter. You'll see it there for yourself. The enemy got into the middle of their business. And all of a sudden, chaos come. But let me be the one to let you know. And those of you that have been walking with the Lord for any length of time, you know that the story just doesn't end there. God will never allow the enemy to get the victory. So while you're going through and you feel like you can't make it any longer, God says, remember what I've spoken in my word. And you say what I said. I'm not here to glorify or to magnify the works of the enemy. But you have, have you ever noticed that he always tries to just needle his way in? Mm -mm. He wants to try and confuse you and take advantage of you when you're the most vulnerable. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 4 says, Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, the hills, the rivers, and the valleys, and the desolate wastes, and the cities that have been forsaken, which became plunder and mockery to the rest of the nations all around. So God lays it out in scripture for us here, but he's also going to give us the victory. That's the one great thing about preaching, you know, that I love. No matter how much of a, a, a cloudy vision that I can create for the circumstances might exist in your life, I will always be able to bring you back to the word of God and declare victory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God was saying now, things are getting personal because you're messing with one of my children. You're not supposed to be doing this. He's saying that his reputation is on the line. And it's not about you at all because, you know, all we are are instruments for God. So when the enemy, begin, enemy begins to mess with us, he is not messing with us. He is messing with God. So now when we lay ourselves down, like Paul says, as living sacrifices, we get out of the way so that, you know, the light affliction that we feel, God says, you know what? I'll take that from you. It's a light thing. God is standing up for you right now in the middle of any crises that you might be dealing with. Anything that you're dealing with, God says, I am standing right there and I'm taking it on. You get out of the way and let me handle this. Just because you're not doing right doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. But how much more would it be pleasing to God when we do right? <laughs> I want to move rapidly to a close for this session here today because God is letting me know that this message, this word is penetrating deeper than I can even understand. There's a mountain that is being dealt with in your life here and now. And the requirement that he has of us is that you begin to confess him in every area of your life. The mountain will no longer be able to bear shame. You see, God never intended for his people to be shamed by those that were attacking Israel. That was the work of the enemy. God says, don't worry, Mr. Mountain. I raise my hand and proclaim an oath that those nations will have their own shame to deal with. Isn't that interesting? Don't worry about the attackers. They will have their seasons. My people are coming back home and they're going to need food. They're going to need to rebuild the nations. They're going to need all of these things. The mountain that they had been facing is going to be brought low so that they can walk through and use it as a pathway to their next dimension. God is letting me know here and now that his children are crying out. But not only are you crying out, you must cry out from a, a place of purity so that he will release the manifold blessings into your lives. Hear me, hear me now. You're about to receive healing in those places of hurt. You're going to be experiencing restoration. Your relationships are about to get better. When the naysayers said it was going to end, God says, no, not so. I am putting those pieces back together again. God is saying, my children will eat the fatted calf. Your children are, are, are going to get up and they're going to declare your name in the marketplace. 
Your portion is being handed out even now from on high. I pray that you will hear the call of God that has gone forth today to speak to the mountain. The mountain. It doesn't matter what that mountain is. You just speak to it. And do not waver in your faith at all. Allow the work of the Lord to, the word of the Lord to just be made manifested in your heart and in your mind. There's no barrier that is too thick that, can, that the word of God cannot penetrate. There's no wall that is too high that the word of God cannot climb over. There's no devil that is too evil that cannot be saved. Isn't that awesome? There's no bully that is so mean that they cannot be dealt with while you're in school, young people. God says, I got your back. All you've got to do is speak what I speak. The Bible lets me know that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whatever things that are true, whatever things that are noble, whatever things that are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things that are lovely, Whatever things that are of good report, if there is any virtue therein, these are the things that we should consider praiseworthy. Then he goes on to let me know whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to yonder mountain, it doesn't matter how far in the, in the future that mountain is. You can say to yonder mountain, mountain, get out of my way. The power of God is in my life. And I expect to walk victoriously. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bow your heads with me, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you again for your word. Lord, he said, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in the heart. Lord, we are not doubting today. We are expecting your word to bring forth manifold blessings for your people. Every person that's under the sound of my voice, oh God, cause, oh God, them to come to the knowledge of your saving grace. If there's one watching or one hearing this word today that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ is the partner of your sins, he says that he will come into your heart. All you've got to do is invite him in and repent and turn from that wicked way. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we decree and declare that this day shall not be like any other. And the word of God that will go forth will produce manifold results. And the sons of God will be made manifested in the earth. They will take their rightful place and declare that you are God and God alone. The halls of Congress will be filled with men and women that know you as their Lord and Savior. The mayor, the elected officials, the president even will be instruments for the kingdom of God. And only that in Jesus matchless name we pray until we see each other again. May God so richly bless you.